Compound angle identities are a super interesting topic. Interesting as far as interesting goes when you're talking about trigonometry, which for people like me is very interesting. So why are these things so awesome? Well, they let us write exact expressions for angles that are not special. Sorry, pi over 12, you just aren't special. <laughs> for what it's worth, I think you're special, pi over 12. Pi over 12 is actually specialer than you think, but we'll get to that in a moment. Here's the facts. Compound angle identities allow us to determine the sine and cos of a sum or difference of two angles. Compound angle identities allow us to write exact expressions for non-special angles. And if there's one thing that's important in trigonometry, it's exact expressions. So why did I say pi over 12 is specialer than you might think? As it turns out, we can write pi over 12 as a sum or difference of two special angles. Remember, compound angle identities allow us to look at the sine or cos of a sum or difference of two angles. For example, if I wanted to determine the exact value for the sine of pi over 12, all I really need to do is find two angles that either add or subtract to get pi over 12. If those two angles are special angles, I should have no problem finding an exact value. So let's look for two angles, special angles, that when added or subtracted give me pi over 12. Now this can be a challenge, and sometimes it takes a few tries, but in this case, I find it's helpful to start with angles whose denominators multiply to give 12. For example, 3 and 4. So you try pi over 3 plus pi over 4. You find a common denominator, ooh, look, 12 and try addition. Ah, oh, shucks, seven pi over 12? We wanted pi over 12. It happens. Let's stick with three and four, but this time let's try subtraction. Sure enough, pi over three minus pi over four gives me pi over 12. Now that we know which two angles subtract to give us pi over 12, it's time to select the appropriate compound angle identity. Looking at the list of identities, it's clear that we need to use sine of x minus y. This is because we're looking for the sine of pi over 12, and we just determined two angles which subtract to give us pi over 12. So this is the identity we're going to use. If I substitute pi over 3 and pi over 4 for x and y respectively in my compound angle identity, you'll see that you get a pretty messy expression. But remember, we picked special angles for a reason. The sine of pi over 3, the cos of pi over 4, the cos of pi over 3, and the sine of pi over 4 are pretty easy to determine exact values for using the special triangles. You'll also need to know how to use the sine and cosine ratios, but if you're watching a video on compound angle identities, I'm going to assume that you know so Katoa. So using the special triangles, I can determine that the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, the cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. I'm subtracting the cosine of pi over 3, which I know to be a half, sine of pi over 4, which I know to be 1 over root 2. I've got multiplication of fractions happening here, so I can simplify my expression into this exact value. It seems like a lot of work just to find an exact value for sine of pi over 12, especially since if we weren't looking for the exact value, we could just type in sine of pi over 12 in our calculator in radian mode, and we'd get 0 0.2588, which happens to be the value of this monster. But remember, exact values, super important in trigonometry. As always with math, there are more complex examples than this, but if you follow this process, you should be okay to tackle most of them. So next time you see a non-special angle, don't be quick to hate. Every angle is special in its own way. Even you, Pi over 12. Thanks.